Hi, this is Anna Olson. I'm here on uh, my show, Insights into Consciousness, on A1R Radio. Today, I am going over crystals and how they work scientifically. So, we have we have basically, you know, just a basic understanding as to how these work. And even if you um, want to. Even if you want to just use them in a, um, a way that um, generally, um, in a way, it's just like a placebo effect. So if they've even found that crystals, I have a quartz crystal here, which is like the main one I'm going to talk about today. So these quartz crystals are one of the basic types of crystals and one of the most used crystals in the world um, for many things. I'm going to go over that in a minute. But first off, I just want to really go over... Uh, the scientific basis to crystals and the reason why we use them, how they heal, how they transfer energy, consciousness, and how they tr how they magnify thought. And before um, you accuse me of sounding too out there with that, there is a lot of research behind this scientifically. So whenever I want to zone in on one of these things that, you know, healing with the energy and things that, that they can't really measure as much with scientific measure, I go into it with how, what we can, you know, prove. And then I go into using it for myself and seeing if I can make it work um, just on a test by test basis and result basis. So, um, I've just put together a little bit of information tonight and then I'm going to take a caller, but I really want to go over crystals and how they work. When I was talking about the placebo effect, that's basically just if you want to just give them the credit that they deserve for the basic uh, premises of crystals heal um, just by the placebo effect, meaning that they did some studies and it was all scientific and, and all of that. And the people who were holding crystals and the, were getting the exact same result as people who were not getting crystals. And before you ask me why I'm using placebo for why they actually work, first of all, our thoughts are the basis of how crystals work. So even with you, even in your lowest level of placebo effect, meaning the thought of the person um, was actually what made it work. So blind studies, you know, show that placebo effect works with many different things. And that's how they actually see what works is a blind study where the person doesn't know if they're taking a placebo, a fake or a real remedy, medication, whatever. And they go and they see the results of everyone involved and nobody is aware of who had the fake or the placebo. So with crystals, they did that and they found that the people who had a placebo or a fake crystal had the exact same results as people who had a real crystal for healing or for feeling something from it or from getting a result from it. The reason why I'm bringing that up is because that scientific premise does exist. That scientific study does exist. It happened. And at the very least, that's what it does. So we know that just handing a, you know somebody a crystal at the least will help them to think put more positive and in healing ways and that in turn will actually heal them so that is the very lowest form of healing that can come from crystals now when we go into it a little more scientifically the things that we can still prove on the other end of the spectrum um first i want to talk about the quartz crystal this is a very um intricate and pretty detailed quartz crystal um, I have a nice cluster here, and um, this is one of my favorites. These are known to magnify, and what I what I really want to do is go into um, the quartz crystal and what it's made of and how it works scientifically. So when they take a quartz crystal, um, they they realize that um, if they put this in a screen, so the way that you're seeing me right now is or if you the way you look at your cell phone anything that has an lcd screen which stands for liquid crystal display think about that that's liquid crystal display meaning they needed these guys these quartz crystals to make it work why because it exchanges information energy um electric current everything this actually conducts um you know metal conducts scientifically these quartz crystals do the same thing but in a different way so uh, in your cell phone and in your screens, if they're LCD, liquid crystal display, you're using some oscillating crystals within that mechanism to make it work, to carry the light through the information. Um, 
and in a way of light to make it work, for the display to work. So um, these are needed to deliver the information that we see in the screens, in the devices, and also in microchips. So when we're saving information on our computer, how does your computer, you may ask yourself, so how does uh, a microchip, how does the microchip continue to store data even when there's no electronic power being fed to the device. How do you turn your computer off or your cell phone off? There's no energy being exchanged there at all. And it's still preserving the energy or the information. So when you think about it, um, the reason why is because microchips have Quartz, they have um, silica dioxide. So a quartz, quartz is also silica dioxide. We've had this around for over 6,000 years and they've been used for many things, even in the Egyptians, uh, the Egyptian times. So when you ask yourself, how does a microchip store the data when there's no electrical power? Well, it's because quartz has the ability to store data for up to 3 million years. So basically a computer chip can store information, data for millions of years. Scientists all know this about these. So um, silico dioxide or quartz has been known for about for thousands of years. It's a constituent of sand and is most often found in nature in the form of quartz. So amazingly, quartz is also found in many living biological organisms. So this stuff is basically alive. The scientists are finding more and more that the reason why these grow in the ground, they have um, living biological material and organisms in them. These are made up of living cells. These are made up of living biological organisms. So when we're looking at a crystal and we're saying, oh yeah, it's pretty, They're in, you know, your kids love them or whatever. Well, actually, the kids are drawn to them because they have different energies and different oscillations. They have different frequencies that they pick up. So that can really be attractive to different people for different reasons and for different needs. Um, there is a quote by Marcel Vogel and um, Marcel Vogel is one of the innovators with research in crystals. And I just wanted to read a quote by Marcel. The crystal is a neutral object whose inner structure exhibits a crystalline state of perfection and balance. When it is precisely cut to the proper geometric form and when the human mind enters into relationship with its structural perfection in the vibration of love, the crystal emits a vibration which extends and amplifies the power and grasp of the user's mind. Imaged thought intent is then amplified. So when we're talking about amplification, that would be a quartz crystal. We know that if we wear a quartz crystal when we are um, feeling good, it can magnify or basically amplify whatever intention it is that you have. So if you're having a bad day, um, you might want to absorb with some dark crystal, like maybe obsidian or, um, you know, any of the black crystals. Uh, and you would absorb the energy first, feel better, and then amplify. So these are used medically. These are used in emotional ways. There are ways that these can rebalance the energy electrical current in the body, in the heart, in the brain center. There's all these different electromagnetic fields and currents that run through the body that make us work. We know for sure that cellularly, when we first start to develop, even in the womb, that we need an electrical current to get that going. Scientists are still trying to figure out where that electrical current comes from. My answer to that as an intuitive and a light worker is that that comes from the divine. That's what makes it possible. That's what continues to grow and be exchanged among ourselves now as we grow and as we age. And that is what keeps us alive. So when they say in, uh, you know, the old historical um, scriptural sense, we are being, you know, our very life is being um, given to us by God. It is a fact because, or the divine, however you see that, because without that electrical current, we would not be kept alive and it could be taken away at any second for a multitude of reasons. If the electrical uh, structure of the heart is being um, taken away, the heart stops working. That's what cardiac arrest is. 
when um, the electrical current in the brain is no longer being amplified or, or exchanging the proper connections in the neurons, that is going to make the brain stop working. And we all know that when the brain is not continuing to work, that the rest of the body will work, but the person is having, you know, you'd have to put that person on life support. So these are many, many ways that, you know, these these crystals work that our bodies work. Um, we're made up of the same stuff. You know, there's a lot of carbon involved. There's a lot of, you know, you could go really deep into this scientifically, which I don't really have time for. But if you look into a lot of this, it's very interesting. There's so much more information about crystals and how they work. The idea is that certain types of crystals have a specific geometrical shape that they're made up of. Um, and it all has these living organisms within it, which in turn will give us different therapies or, or cause energy exchange or electrical exchange or an amplification of our thoughts in ways that will heal, help us feel better emotionally, and basically just make things happen for us. It's, it's our control with our thoughts of our surroundings. And that's how these work. There's a lot of therapies that um, go into crystal work. And I really have to give the credit to this one, to my son, Devin, because when we were um, at the lake one year before I ever even looked at a crystal for any kind of therapy, um, he was really into crystals when he was younger. And he had found some a big chunk of jade at the lake. And it was still cool from the lake water. And we had a headache, like a dehydration headache. And I had all my kids in the car and I was ready to drive home. And I said, geez, I just have this headache. And my son, being as intuitive as he is, said, why don't you just put this against your forehead? And I thought, oh, how cute. You know, he was younger then. So I was like, oh, he's so cute. I'm just going to put this to my forehead just to kind of, you know, um, let him know that I tried it because I thought he was adorable, which he is. And I put it against my forehead and the minute I did, my headache went away completely and I didn't have another headache for a month. And I had been known to have, you know, migraines and all of that. So the jade against my forehead around the third eye chakra is what did it for me. That's what cured my headache. And that's when I thought maybe there was something to this. And I um, realized later that that crystal was cleansed. It was in the water and it had been washed over many, many times by the water, the elements, the minerals in the water, that it was a cool temperature. Yes, it, it hardly, it didn't touch a big part of my forehead. It was just a little touch in the middle here and boom, my headache was gone. I believe that it aligned somehow the energy in, um, in the cells within um, the, the frontal plate in my skull. Um, I really am like a complete anatomy nerd. Um, but the, um, the frontal bone and, um, this, um, forehead bone here, basically it's, it's, um, a way that I believe that we can transfer energy and different, um, therapeutic effects for many, many, for many, many crystals. The crown chakra is the good, um, gateway or, um, entry or passageway into the system neurologically, anything that affects the nerves. So I'd love to do a, uh, reading tonight. I'm going to tune in to Reese. He's waiting on the phone. Reese is waiting on the phone for me to do a reading. So hello, Reese. Hello. Hi. How are you tonight? I'm well. How are you? Just fine. Um, okay, so I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> do I ask you questions okay. or do you just intuitively feel things? Well, it can go either way. I, I like to hear what you say first. So really what you're asking is for um, me to do a basic reading. We can sort of focus on one thing if you'd like. If there's a pressing issue right now in your life, I can focus mainly on that. Or I can just do a basic reading. It's it's a, basically up to you because it's your reading. If I had to focus on anything, it would just be I have a problem for a while with very low energy levels. Okay. And I feel like I research different ways to bring them up and I learn different things, but I just can't seem to do it. Okay. So it's physical energy. Is it mental energy more so, or is it just your physical energy? No, it's more like mental and emotional, mm -hmm. which then affects my physical. Right. So I don't know. the first thing... The first thing that's coming to me is um, 
if you've been, if you've been even on the, even in the past, on any medications or, um, you know, sometimes there's mind altering things such as antidepressants or, um, benzos, like, you know, anything that's for anxiety or, um, depression. Sometimes people use, you know, they'll drink alcohol just to unwind after work because they need to unwind. Anything like that that you can think of? I mean, I've drank in the past. I actually don't really enjoy it anymore. Um, Mm -hmm. I've never really taken antidepressants for a short period of time. Years ago, I took an ADD medication, but it was for maybe three months, and that was about it. Okay. Okay, because what I'm getting is that there's um, such a um, fast-paced um, th- that your brain is kind of like on fast pace a lot of the time. I know I can relate to this and I'm wondering if you may be empathic because this is very common for empaths. Do you, are you familiar with what an empath is? Yes, and I think I, I, I definitely agree with that. I probably am and my brain is constantly going all the time. Right, and then you said you had, you had taken a medication for ADD. So uh, I don't think that it's a, um, you know, Let's put it this way. I think that it's more of a, your brain is on so fast, but we all have a certain amount of energy that we have in a day before we need to recharge and sleep at night. And what I'm getting is that um, you're trying to regulate how fast the your neurological system was going, how fast your brain was running on high, high speed. And what it did was it slowed. It slowed it for a time, but um, in the interim it also kind of um, put it into like a loop of, um, are you having trouble sleeping at night or do you have trouble sleeping at night? Um, I do. I actually started taking melatonin sometimes to sleep. Okay. Yeah, because I'm getting like that that either because then that makes me groggy in the morning. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm getting that what, what happened with that period of your life is it, put your brain into a cycle and is very easily fixed. So the cycle was that um, you wanted to slow down the brain a little bit because you're feeling all these things. First thing you can do is protect by visualizing a shield that goes around you anytime you're going to go anywhere. So you don't pick up everybody else's stuff. I've had this issue myself and it can lead to things like, you know, I've heard of migraines, fibromyalgia, exhaustion, So um, neurologically, your brain is on overload and then you're not getting enough sleep to recharge. So um, the main thing that I would recommend to you is regular meditation. Um, Are you familiar with what kind of meditation works best for you? Um, No, I actually, so I have practiced meditation and the woman that I practice with does Kundalini. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so Kundalini can also make you pretty exhausted when you're processing all of that, but you want something in the interim to like really, um, recharge you. So if you could go over, if you could even research real quick, I wish I could go over all of it now, but I'm limited on my time. But if you could even Google, um, meditations for cleansing, recharging and shielding your aura, your electromagnetic energy, your nervous system what that will do when you do this every day, even if you start with 10 minutes in the morning or at night before you go to bed and make sure you don't lay down when you do it, like you're going to go to sleep because your brain will be triggered into the sleep cycle that way. It'll think it's time for a nap. You want to be sitting upright and um, do, do like 10 minutes at first and see if you can increase five minute increments in five minute increments. And you're going to do the meditation. And what that's going to do is it's going to balance out your um, brain function in a way where it's regulated. You can, you can balance and, and process your Kundalini properly and you can sleep better at night because when your brain and go out in nature, nature is a big one for um, a brain that's going too fast. I, I'm guess I, I'm also getting that you're intelligent. You have a lot of intelligence. So your brain ever since you were little wanted to process a lot at once because it's faster. Yeah, I have a so, lot of stuff in there, but I can't recall the majority of it. <laughs> okay. That takes more energy, you know. So I think getting the balance back is key. So you want to uh, balance out your sleep. And then, you know, the meditation will do that. Time in nature will do that. Maybe even, I know it sounds like, okay, you're tired. And you don't want to go out in nature because you're tired. But once you just you go out, you know, like let's say a little walk in the forest or on the beach or what have you, you can increase as you get better and feel better, I feel like you also are a deficit in vitamin D3. Have you had your vitamin D3 checked lately? 
I have. It's um, slightly low. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I, actually, um, I get I get vitamin D pills. Okay, good. And I think that also the sunlight will help with that a little bit too. I know you don't, a lot of women don't want it on like their face. I know I don't, but um, you know, your arms and your legs, if you can just expose your arms and legs like 15 minutes, three times a week um, to that sunlight, that will also help. So some sunlight, nature, fresh air, you know, um, that will help kickstart you back into feeling um, better so that you can get more rest. And in turn, the cycle will be reversed instead of, you know, you going on full throttle all day where it's just like you're exhausted and you can't, you know, you can't add anything else to your day. So that's ba- basically the the basis to that. And I'm, I, you know, today my show's on crystals and I just, um, it's interesting you're talking about your energy because the quartz crystal, will um, increase your physical energy. And I'm also getting amethyst for you. Um, That's good for the intestines and the gut, the amethyst. And I also feel like doing a really good balancing act with probiotics for you would really also help you. Yeah, I used to take probiotics and then I stopped. And I don't mean like so much my energy level, like I'm like physically, I mean like energetically, like my energy level is low. Right. Like, like you so know what I mean? Your brain or like, your... Like angry. Like I'm angry. I'm mad. I'm upset. I'm all of these things on the low spectrum of the energy level. And I have a hard time bringing it up to where, you know, I can receive some other benefits like, you know, be able to manifest things or be able to um, use the law of attraction or mm-hmm. intention. Like all because my energy is just really low and I feel like I, like I said, I do all this research, I read all these things, I, 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 it's like I know what to do, but I'm just stuck, so I'm never okay. able to do it, and I didn't know well, if you thought anything about that. Well, the meditation, meditation the and, thing. yeah, the meditation, all that will help with that, and the nature, that will actually help with that, that'll help raise your frequency into more of a gratitude, um, because I, I do feel like right now, uh, it's just old process stuff. The Kundalini brings up your old stuff. So it's shadow work. It's basically any trauma, anger from your past. It's being brought up. So it's good to process it. And we don't have to always be in this happy go lucky mood all of the time. But if you want to connect back to the divine and like really like raise up your, your frequency. So your frequency is what, um, you know, would be low then. Uh, and, you know, love right. and above is, is the frequency that's higher, you know, and more therapeutic joy. So the things that can bring you love and joy, sometimes they come after you process that Kundalini work. And if you want to take a break from the Kundalini work for a little while and process and get back to feeling kind of like you're at a better frequency, you can do that too. But um, I think for most people being grateful and also um, to raise your um, vibrational frequency, it's, you know, it's it's kind of like the joke says, like if you're around um, rainbows and kittens, <laughs> nature, animals, children, those all those things will help you be more in the present moment. So um, naturally, children, babies and, you know, animals are more in the present moment. Um, we humans tend to ruminate on the past or worry about the future more. And that's what puts us in that lower vibrational frequency. Some heart chakra work and your meditation can also help with that. So um, I'm getting like that um, you, you basically, you know, could really benefit from uh, the, you know, being more grateful. And then I know that doesn't always fix it, but it will start to put you on the road to that. And the other things as well will also raise the frequency. So I have about 90 seconds. Um, I hope I've helped. And if you need me um, in the future, you can email me and you can contact me at AnnaOlsonIntuitive.com. So, um, I mean, I'd love to hear from anybody. You can email me. You can, um, I give away five free personal readings um, for this month to study and to practice my new mediumship skills that I've been increasing in. So, um, AnnaOlsonIntuitive.com. I'm all done for tonight. Can't wait to see you next week at 6 30 Pacific Standard Time and 9.30 Eastern Standard Time here on A1R with Insights into Consciousness. Again, Anna Olson Intuitive.com. Thanks so much. And I'm also on Facebook, Anna Olson Intuitive. So Facebook, 
facebook.com i think it's forward slash anna olson intuitive so you can also reach me there and even book an appointment on my website or there too and i do one-on-one coaching as well so um i'd love to hear from you i am excited to work with new people i want to practice some mediumship work and i offer that to people you know if you want a free reading i've had a few people tell me that they're in you know kind of like a situation where they're having a hard time financially but they'd really need a reading so um a win-win there is i get to practice my mediumship skills and you don't have to pay for that one so um five free ones five free readings for this month and um anna olson i will talk to you again next week thanks